Hey, 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 hey. There are major spoilers in this video. Very big spoilers. Spoilers, I would spoil the game for you if you haven't played it. So if you haven't played the game and you don't want to be spoiled on it, you should leave. You, you should also hit like and subscribe first, but, but then you should leave because there will be spoilers for not only the vanilla game, but also Royal's New Palace. So you should doubly leave if you don't want to be spoiled on either of those. Okay, thank you, bye! Hey, hi, I'm a person on the internet, and today we're gonna be playing Persona 5 Royal. But not only playing Persona 5 Royal, we're gonna be playing the game using only physical attacks. Now, there's tons of different types of attacks in Persona 5 Royal, ranging from fire to curse to nuke and everything in between. Which means limiting ourselves to only physical will be problematic, to say the least. Especially because we're playing on the hardest difficulty of the game, Merciless. Which is a difficulty of the game that almost forces you to use different types of attacks to exploit certain enemies' weaknesses. But we're throwing all of that out of the window and only using physical attacks on every enemy, mini-boss, and boss, and everything else we fight in the entire game. Will all of this work out? Well, I mean, there's only one way to find out. Oh, wait, 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 part two, spoiler, oh, part two, yes, spoiler warning, part two, part two, spoiler warning, if you haven't beat Persona 5 Royal, and you don't want to get spoiled, leave, leave immediately, if you're staying, you are complicit with getting spoiled, okay, thank you, bye! So, the game starts us out with a cutscene of our protagonist Joker in a casino. And shortly after that, we're blasted into our first fight of the game. Now this fight is very simple, as you literally cannot die during it. And plus, the persona we have at this point, question mark, question mark, question mark, has a colossal physical attack, so we're fine. After that, we're brought into a cutscene with a new royal party member, Kazumi. Joker, it's her! She's the weird reading I've been getting! So after Kazumi brutally murders us, we form an alliance with her and we fight the shadows off. Once again, our persona still has a colossal physical attack, so we attack two of them and they're scripted to crit every time, but it's also scripted to miss the last one so then Kazumi can finish him off and do her all-out attack. Yeah, see the fortress is not happening. I think that's some intentional. After that, Joker jumps out of the casino window to make his escape. See ya. But unfortunately, the police end up capturing him and telling him the current sales of his Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Amiibo. You were sold out. And the game finally begins as we're brought into the police station where we have to name our character. Now I let my chat name my character, which was a terrible idea, but at the very least it will be a great opportunity to plug my Twitch over at twitch.tv slash screaming so you can watch me do things like this and even more. But anyways, I let my chat give me names, put them into a wheel, and this is what the wheel decided. All of these are terrible, so whichever one we get, we're going to have a terrible playthrough. Dean Sparker. Okay, you know what? That's one of the better options, I think. I think that's one of the better ones we could have got there. And thus, the infamous phantom thief, Penis Parker, was born. And now Mr. Parker recalls the events of his life all the way back to April of current year to figure out what got him arrested in a casino. And Penis has a very important lesson to learn. They can be following me without me knowing, right? Choose to read my tweet and then take that personally. That's like going into a town square, seeing a big notice board. 
there's a notice, guitar lessons, and you go, I don't fucking want guitar lessons. <laughs> So now that we've got past the beginning, it's time to move into Kamashita's Palace, but before we do so, I want to explain some of the rules and the general route of this run. In terms of rules, obviously with this being a physical only run, we can only use physical attacks. Meaning whenever we do damage to the enemy, it should be through physical attacks, at least if we're attacking directly. That means no gun, fire, nuke, or any other sort of element that isn't physical. Furthermore, the items that do direct damage to enemies, like stun gun and whatnot, are also banned, as that's still us doing damage to the enemy, even if it's not with our personas. Of course, there are technically still ways to get around this. Things like magic ointment or repel are totally legal, as we're not doing direct damage to them, and they're really just damaging themselves. However, healing and support skills are still allowed, as they're not doing damage to the enemy, at least not directly. And all-out attacks and gun all-out attacks are also legal, but that's about it. The only time I'm allowed to use something that isn't the physical attack is when there's literally no other way to defeat the enemy, and I mean literally no other way to defeat the enemy. Like, I can't run, I can't fucking repel, I can't do anything. But well, let's hope it doesn't come to that. In terms of DLC, Persona 5 Royal has paid DLC, in which I have none of because I'm broke. However, it also has free DLC from Persona 5 Vanilla, which I will be using as everyone who has Persona 5 Royal has this DLC, so I don't consider it unfair. So I will be using the DLC accessories, but when it comes to DLC Personas, I have stricter rules. To make sure the run isn't super easy, I can only take out a DLC Persona when I'm at the level that that DLC Persona is at. For some reason, you can take out the DLC Personas at any level in this game, and obviously the run would be very easy if I have level 90 Messiah Piccaro at level 1, which is why I have this rule in place. Now in this run, I'm going to be getting a lot of confidant stops, so I'll try to explain most of them very briefly. I'm going to be maxing out Maruki because I really don't have a choice. I mean, you have to max him out to get the extra royal palace, which I obviously want to do in this run. I also want to max out Kazumi because she learns a very good third awakening physical attack. I want to get the fortune teller to at least rank one because it'll help me grow my social stats, which will make it so I can do other confidants faster. I want to max out Takemi because one, she's Takemi, and two, she'll help me get more healing items and general discounts. I mean, look, in any run, healing items are just a nice thing to have. I want to get Mishima to at least rank 7 because it'll grant me more XP and help me rank up faster. I want to get the Shogi Girl to at least rank 9 because it'll help me escape from battles and switch out my party members mid-battle. I want to get Ryuji to max rank just because he's going to be one of the party members we're using the most, and having the party members we're using a lot awaken to their second and third personas is just nice to have, as well as all the other party member abilities they have in their confidant, and the fact that Ryuji gives us insta-kill so it'll help us grind. Look, Ryuji's like a like an instant max rank, alright? He's great. I want to get Yusuke to max rank for pretty much the same reasons as Ryuji, as well as the fact that Yusuke can duplicate skill cards which is really useful to have since I'm going to be using a lot of skill cards on my main persona so I can give him a lot of different physical attacks and whatnot. I want to have Oya to at least rank 3 just so I don't have to deal with Palace's security levels as much. I want to have Futaba at at least rank 6 because she can randomly give us charge which will make our physical attacks for that turn do 2.5 times damage. I want to get the Velva Twins to rank max because that'll make it so I can fuse Zhao Gongen, which I think I'm pronouncing correctly and he can be executed to make the Giganto Machia belt accessory. I want to get Kawakami to max just because I'll have more free time if I do. I want to get Shinya to rank 3 because I can negotiate with Personas easier. And I want to get Sujiro to rank 6 because I can make some pretty bomb-ass coffee if I do. And with all that dog shit exposition out of the way, we can finally get in to Kamashita's Palace. <laughs> So there's a lot of tutorial in Kamashita's Palace I'm just going to skip, and I'm mostly just going to go over the forced battles. Because any normal battle in Kamashita's Palace, if it did bother us, we could run from. But to be honest with you, all of the enemies in Kamashita's Palace are pretty weak, as it's the first palace in the game. So I didn't really have any issue killing them, even if it was just with physicals. So let's move on to Joker's Awakening, where after we'll have to do our first forced battle. <laughs>
and thus we're given our first persona, Arsene, who is not that good, but uh, he, he, he exists, he's something, he, he, he has physicals. I, well, I mean, not right now, but he learns them eventually. Now, at this point, Arsene doesn't have any physical moves, so we just have to spam the regular attack button, but it's not that much of a problem because these two pumpkin dudes are pretty weak, and they go down pretty quick. So literally, this entire fight is just hitting the X button. But look! We learned Cleave, so now we actually have a physical attack on Arsene. Furthermore, we meet a dumb cat in a cage, we let it out even though it could possibly kill us since we've never seen it in our entire lives, and we move forward. Morgana then ejaculates and guesses Persona, which is actually pretty good. His Persona is not only good for healing, but also learns a physical attack named Miracle Punch, which does medium physical damage and has a high chance of critting. We don't have it right now, but it is a very good move to have for regular battles, as we can crit a lot of enemies and all attack them, making battles go a lot faster. Ryuji is the next to awaken to his persona, and he might be the best party member we get in the entire run. Not only does Ryuji learn a multitude of good physical attacks, but he's also the only party member to learn Charge, which is a support skill that, when used, ups your next physical attack to do 2.5 times damage, which is really good for dealing out good damage. Again, we don't have it right now, but Ryuji will be a very useful party member. However, the battle that accompanies Ryuji's awakening is not very easy in this run. You see, this battle is supposed to take advantage of the fact that Ryuji learns electrical moves. The problem is, we can't use those electrical moves, so we're stuck using physicals. Persona! Oh, you don't have a physical attack. Oh no. Um, well, this is gonna be painful. Maybe we should just go for the main guy. Oh yeah, we can just go for the main one. He doesn't have that myself. Oh my fucking god. Holy fucking Sorry. shit. Uh, what do I do here? Holy fuck. I'm gonna heal. I might actually die. I might have to redo this. Yeah. You have to hang on, okay? So yeah, this fight is not easy, but after many attempts, I finally came up with a foolproof plan. Okay, okay, there's no way. There's no way he keeps spawning them after you kill them. I think we go for the guys on the side first, because they're the ones doing a lot of damage. I think there's no way the game is... Ballsy enough to respawn them. That's, yeah, there's no way. And thus, that strategy actually worked. You see, attacking one of the horses with Ryuji, Morgana, and Joker was enough to kill them in one turn. And after killing the two horses, the big red dude didn't have much to defend himself, leaving him easy to pick off. Persona! Hey, what I tell you? I told you we'd get through it. I fucking told you. Afterwards, we're back at school and we watch Kamashita brutally murder a kid. <laughs> After that, we watch Suzui commit Suzui's side. Oh, no, 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 you cannot joke about that. Yeah, that's not funny. That's not the kind of humor we do on this show. Okay, I'm s yeah, I'm sorry. And now, due to Suzui's suicide, which I will not make a joke out of, Ana awakens to her persona. You know what? I'm not some cheap girl you can toy with, you scumbag. Bitch! So An's awakening spawns a mini-boss, which is a dude on a toilet, which is not that important, but what is important is the fact that he resists physical attacks, making it so we can still use physicals, but they'll do far less damage than any sort of other attack, making this fight not impossible, but very annoying. This mini-boss is made to show off On's fire ability, so obviously I'd be using fire under normal circumstances, but this is a fizz-only run, so we're using physical against someone who resists it. But you know what, fuck it, it is what it is. All in all, this mini-boss doesn't do too much damage, however, he does attack with wind, which killed off Ryuji fairly early, but I just kept healing my party members with on while needed, so even with Ryuji gone, we still did enough damage to kill him. It took like five minutes, but I mean, hey, we killed him. That's a plus. Hey, we did it. It's too easy. Going into the next fight, we need to fight Jesus, or at least what I assume Jesus would look like if he saw all the shit we've done to the world. However, Jesus is kind of a pushover. He's used as a tutorial to guard in the game, so as long as we guard after he charges, he's really not that big of a deal. I knew Jesus was a weakling after all. There it is. Okay, you know what? I take the Jesus joke from earlier back. It's truly 
too soon. Oh, also, on gets the sleep attack, Dormina. That reminds me, I can use ailment attacks in this run as well. I don't think I mentioned it before, but now I am. Not like I'm gonna be using them much though. They're not as good as you might think. And moving forward, we finally get into the Kamashita boss fight, where he shows us that his true form is a naked pink demon. Man, what a coincidence, that's mine too. So I sent the calling card into the Kamashita fight, but there was a problem. Morgana wasn't going up and getting the crown because I wasn't doing enough damage to Kamashita for him not to notice Morgana. So I died, went back before I sent the calling card and fused Barith, who has an attack up support move, in hopes that when I use this move on Joker and Ryuji, they would do enough damage for Morgana to go steal Kamashita's crown. I also took a trip to the clinic so I could spend my remaining money on revives. So I sent the calling card again and did the fight, but even with these attack buffs, they still weren't doing enough damage for Morgana to steal the crown. So I decided, fuck that, let's just kill him. But then another problem arose. I ran out of revives and healing and died. So I went back again before I sent the calling card, this time worked at this convenience store for like five fucking days and spent all of the money I made on revives in the clinic. Hopefully, that would be enough. So I sent the calling card again, did the Kamashita fight, forgot to fuse Barith. Wait! I forgot! No, wait, I forgot! I forgot to- I forgot to fuse Barith! I forgot to fuse him! I was supposed to fuse Barith! Before the fight! No! Okay, this it's, it's fine. It's fine. I could do this without Barith. I could not do this without Barith, and that became extremely apparent only a few minutes later. What's up, Barith? A persona that I don't need. Wait, no, I didn't guard! No, I forgot! I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I... Okay, guys, so we're gonna fuse Barith. Uh, so he's a persona in this game that, um... Basically, what he does is, um... So he's pretty useful, uh, so he's, uh, Persona. It's great, actually, it's a great, it's a great, you guys wanna learn about him? It's a great story, I'm there. Uh, so Barith is a Persona in this game. So I went back, actually remembered to fuse Barith this time. Please allow me to fuse this great Persona that I, this whole time, I was just, I was really concerned, oh, because I was just like, how am I gonna do without Barith, right? It must be impossible to do. There he is, look at him. Look at him. What a knight. Look at him. He's in- he's- uh, he's- he's quite literally my knight in shining armor. What, what would I do without him? Then went back and did the fight for a final time where I finally won, but not by stealing Kamoshida's crown. Fuck Morgana and fuck that stupid idea. I just straight up killed him like a Persona user should. Say shit, fucking dumb cat thinks he knows better than me. Fucking stupid motherfucking cat, dumb piece of shit, cat piece, fucking garbage talking fucking cat, piece of trash, should have kept him in coma, she just fucking gallop, castle! <sighs> His plan sucked ass, mine was better. Fucking kill him. Oh, let's go get the fucking crowd. I'll be look my fucking ball sack. After that, the palace collapses, and Joker, Ryuji, On, and Morgana must run out of the palace before it collapses on them. Ryuji! It's been a while, so I just tripped this. We're back. Ryuji! He didn't make it out. We gotta go back! That's impossible. That was truly cringeworthy. Hey, do you know what time it is? That's right. It's time for the Madarame arc. Here's just a quick synopsis if you forgot who Madarame is. Yusuke first comes to Madarame and says, Madarame, Madarame, let me come in. Madarame then responds by saying, No, no, by the hair on my chinny, chin, chin. Okay, who replaced my script with the three little pigs? That was truly cringeworthy. But don't worry if that's too hard to understand, we're not at Madarame's palace yet. We must first delve into Mementos, where we have a forced boss fight tutorial. This boss fight is normally very easy because the weakness is very obvious. What's the weakness again? I forgot. Anyway, it's not important because it's easy. However, doing this with only physicals proves to be a little bit more difficult, which is where the sleep ailment comes into play. 
Originally doing this just using physicals, I actually died quite a bit. But once I realized On has sleep, it was a clean sweep. Or at least it would have been if she didn't die. Oh my god, why hit her, man? But that actually didn't matter because I had Succubus on Joker, who also learned sleep. So the entire fight became me using Joker to sleep the enemy, and the Ryuji to technical it, and that was literally the entire fight. I'm not even joking. Okay, that's gonna be the end. After that, we hear about an artist named Madarame, stealing from his pupils and abusing them. So we go right up to his home uninvited, and meet with one of his pupils, who weirdly tells us that he's not being abused. Now, I mean, normally, people who are abused wouldn't just admit that they're abused to random people, but, I mean, come on! Why wouldn't he just tell us? However, obviously being a pupil of an artist, he's an artist himself. So he decides to use Joker as a model, and thus begins the romance route between Yusuke and Joker. However, we've already run into a roadblock. Yusuke realizes that Joker isn't a great model, and he needs to find a way to make Joker actually advertisable. So he hatches an idea that will truly break the bank. That's because I was unconsciously being modest for your sake. However, I have nothing to worry about anymore. If you're willing to bear everything to me, I will put my heart and soul into creating the best nude painting ever! And thus, Yusuke creates the best nude painting of Joker I've ever seen in my entire life. However, Madarame is not too happy about it, because he gets his YouTube channel taken down under terms of services because of Yusuke's painting. Yusuke is disgusted that Madarame can't see the true art of Joker's nudity, and decides to join the Phantom Thieves. And thus, we begin Madarame's palace in our quest to take down Madarame. Now, there's actually something special I want to do in this palace. Persona 5 Royal adds the addition of Will Seeds, which are three seeds hidden within the palace, and if you get all three, you get an accessory which is normally pretty good. The one you get from Madarame's palace is the Ring of Vanity, which gives you a move named Bleeding Dry Brush, and when you use it, it forms a barrier that can absorb one attack as well as having a passive that will nullify the wearer's weaknesses. Overall, it's a really good accessory. So I got the first two Will Seeds in the palace, but the problem came with the third one. There's a mini-boss guarding the third Will Seed, and the problem with that is that the fact that this mini-boss is null to physical. However, I came up with a backup strategy. Since it was impossible to kill this mini-boss, I decided that I was just gonna go with the two Will Seeds that I already had, and buy the third one from Jose and Mementos at a later date. Now with that out of the way, the only thing left to do is the Madarame boss fight. Now I've actually already posted my full run of the boss fight on my channel, because I thought it was really interesting how I got this fight done, as I didn't even think it was possible going into this run. But I'll try to sum it up here as fast as I can. The first phase of the fight has you fight Madarame in four different pieces. Two eyes, a nose, and a mouth. The way you're supposed to approach this fight is by using attacks that attack every single one of those at once. The problem is that our physical attacks at this point in the game only attack one enemy at a time. But there's a bigger problem. Even if I could get rid of all of them individually, and by the way, Madarame heals them after you take them down, the mouth drains physical attacks, which means I cannot damage it. However, there's a way to get around this. If the fight takes enough turns, you can eventually send someone to pour black paint over Madarame. Doing this will make him weak to every single ailment in the game, including physical attacks making him easy enough to kill in one turn. So I just guarded for every single turn until I was given the prompt to pour black paint on him, in which I did so and disposed of him quickly. But then we're brought into his second phase, where Madarame is on his own, and he spawns four clones of himself that all attack in different ailments. What you're supposed to do is attack them with their opposite ailment so you can expose their weakness, baton pass, and take down every single one of them, and then do a powerful attack on Madarame. But again, we can't use their opposite ailments because we're only using physical. Therefore, what I had to do is equip the accessory gauntlet, which makes our party members far more likely to evade attacks. This is important because all of these clones of Madarame will attack the weaknesses of our party members. With those equipped, our party members will, most of the time, dodge the attacks that they're weak to. All we have to do after that is just attack Madarame with physical attacks, and he goes down. This was by no stretch of the imagination easy, but once I got the strategy down, it wasn't that bad. Once again, I do recommend watching my full video on this fight, because there really were that many strats that went into beating this fight physical only, and I'm probably the only human being stupid enough to actually try to figure this out. But either way, we take Madarame down, and Yusuke can finally post his nude painting of Joker on the internet. I will put my heart and soul into creating the best nude painting ever! And now, as we leave Madarame, we enter Kaneshiro.
That sounded, uh, look, just, just, just don't take it like that, okay? Near the beginning of the Kaneshiro arc, we go on a school trip to a TV station. At this TV station, we meet Totally Trustworthy, and he says the line that everyone loves. Oh, am I mistaken? I thought I heard something about- Big Chungus for some reason. No matter. Well, see you tomorrow. I did some mementos requests, but honestly, they're not that big of a deal, even though some of them resist physical, because I have Lucky Punch on both Morgana and Joker at this point, and it's a physical move that has a high critical rate as well as the fact that I have a move named Rebellion on Joker, which ups the crit rate of any of our party members for three turns. So despite the fact that they resist physical, the amount of criticals we're doing completely negates the fact that they even have the resistance in the first place. Also, after excessively driving around mementos, I finally got 400 flowers, which I could trade in for the final will seed of Madarame's palace, giving me the Ring of Vanity. The reason I wanted this ring so much is because it gives you a move named Bleeding Dry Brush. What Bleeding Dry Brush does is when you use it on a teammate, they'll drain any attack that isn't almighty for one turn, which is really, really useful because it essentially makes them almost unkillable for that turn. As you can imagine, when I'm in a tough spot, I'm definitely going to be using this on Joker a lot. I got in a fight with these two Oni-looking dudes who resist physical attacks, but a little bit of Lucky Punch here and a little bit of Rebellion there, and they weren't that big of a deal. But then two more spawned because fun game, and then I had to do it again. They're a little bit of a challenge, but not really. Like I said, the resistance to physical is almost negated when you critical them so much. So Makoto awakens to her persona, which is really a bike, and then we have to fight the fucking Onis again! We do crit strats for the 90th time in a row, and then we finally fucking kill it. In terms of how good Makoto is for this run, she's a decent healer, but her physicals are lacking. She has Vajra Blast, which is okay, but I think I prefer Morgana as a healer for the most part. Anyways, in this time, I got the Crystal of Gluttony, which I'll eventually turn into the Ring of Gluttony, because the passive effect of this ring is to have an automatic Tetra Karn and Makara Karn at the start of battle, which will mean we'll reflect one attack at the beginning of each battle. It's not that useful, but, I mean, fuck it, why not? It's free, basically. I also maxed out Ryuji's Confidant, so I got all of his abilities, including his second Awakening. And finally, without further ado, we get to the Kaneshiro boss fight. For the Kaneshiro fight, the layout I used was Ryuji, Yusuke, and Makoto. I used Ryuji and Yusuke mostly for their good physical attacks, and Makoto just to heal me and use Bleeding Dry Brush on me almost every turn. The persona I used on Joker was named Izanagi, a persona that learns a very good physical attack pretty early into the game. So essentially the entire first phase it just turns into attack Kaneshiro, and that's literally it. At one point they'll ask you to throw an expensive item to stop him from doing his really powerful attack and really his only good attack. I did so and the entire first phase was pr pretty pretty easy from there on. I like how Ryuji is the best party member to have for the Kaneshiro fight because when you have to throw an expensive item for him, the other party member is like, uh, I don't know, we could throw this, but you know, it's a little expensive and I don't know. And Ryuji's just like, yes, <laughs> we will throw everything we have. Gotta love him. We'll throw everything, <laughs> including our family heirloom. Exactly. Entering phase two, I forgot the way that it works as Kaneshiro sleeps you and then attempts to technical you so we can kill you in one hit. So as you may expect, I died. But upon this death, I came up with a plan. I need to of, make of it. a persona that is null to gun and fizz. And then I literally win this fight. No fucking... It's like the easiest fight of my life. How the fuck are you just gonna go and do that? Well, it shouldn't be that hard to find one. It's gotta be one. You're literally insane. I don't know. Despite being literally insane, that persona did exist and was definitely fusible at this level. But not you okay with this? Yes, I found someone not a gun and fit. See, I told you it was possible. Shiki Oji. Fuck. Wait, I have a Shiki Oji. He's also null curse and bless, right? Yeah. He's really fucking good for early persona. Yeah, I know, but he has no physical attacks. You have to teach him one somehow. I know, but it's not that big of a deal. I just won't have to. I just won't attack on Joker. Oh no, I can. I can teach him a physical with the, with the fusion. Do I even need to fuse for this? Is a Nagi? Ah, oh, fuck! I, I can't stick out another one. And aim no assume. 
fuck, I like both of these guys, but whatever. And thus, Shiki Oji was taken out, and I was pretty much unkillable during the second phase of this fight. So even when Karnashiro slapped me, he couldn't do anything to me, and it made this kind of a cakewalk. Anyways, in the second phase of the fight, we fight Kaneshiro and his two guards, and all three of them are resistant to physical attacks. The game wants you to do ailments on them and then kill Kaneshiro, but... Uh, I was taking too long, so I decided I'd just fucking brute force it and kill them. I was unkillable anyways, so I had all the time I needed. And after the guards went down, it wasn't so long until Kaneshiro himself went down, making this probably the easiest fight of the entire run, to be honest with you. I don't think anything else will be this easy. Regardless, we made it to the end of Kaneshiro, and I think this is where I'm gonna end this part of the video, but trust me, we've only just begun. We have a little bit more Persona 5 to get through. So if you like this video, hit like, and maybe I'll actually finish this run. That would be pretty cool. I think it'd be cool. I like this run. I think it's a lot of fun. Either way, Please like, subscribe, do all the fucking YouTube shit that, you know, the YouTuber tells you to do at the end of the video. Uh, favorite it, share it on Pornhub. I, 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 don't, I don't know, I'm not good at this. And I'll see you in the next one. But until then, I'm Screedmints, and I am going to go have an existential crisis. <laughs>